me, your host, Sean Lynn, in the pub for a dram with friends where we talk about faith, family, food, and fun. Pull up a chair and I'll pour you a drink. Episode 2 with my good friend Mario Tonaguzzi, The Prodigal Son Returns. Stay tuned as I pour him a draft. Welcome, friends, to another episode of A Dram with Friends. I am blessed to be joined by Mario Tonaguzzi, longtime friend. Uh, he's longtime reporter 34 years at the calgary herald proud italian <laughs> and that's what i was trying to decide what to pour in my cup so all i could find was some amaro and i didn't know if that counted as a dram so uh do i pick something else off the shelf mario where do i go today yeah you know what i uh, i did the same thing so this is what i have <laughs> Ooh, yes uh, my Ridge good my good friends at Bridgeland Distillery, and the uh, this is a nice single malt spirit, uh, mash number one, un unoaked, and um, yeah, they uh, it, it's it's quite nice. I, I enjoy so it. I do have a bottle of Bridgeland Distillery Gertz Demeanor brandy up there, but I'm hesitant to crack it because it is batch one, and I'm thinking I might hold on to that just to see. Where uh, it goes in a few years, so maybe I will grab something similar and I have because I'm gonna be heading out to the Okanagan. I am blessed oh, to have Laird of Fin tree oh, single malt, and to get this bottle, you actually have to put your name into a lottery to get drawn and I was lucky enough oh. to get drawn to even buy the bottle so how this much? bottle how much the bottle this bottle it's uh, lot three and it's probably four or five years old now so uh, oh, lovely I've been nursing it for a while I, I was lucky to win another one and it's just sitting to see uh, what's gonna go so I'll pour did you know a dram is only an eighth of an ounce? So an eighth of an ounce. Holy smoke, so, that's nothing. I know. So <laughs> I we're not encouraging <laughs> over drinking here. Welcome. So Mario, tell me how does a how does a guy end up in Calgary as a reporter? Oh my lord. Uh long story. So I'm originally from Ottawa and uh Born and raised, grew up there, went to university there, Carleton, got my journalism degree. And uh, so 79, I graduated. And uh, at that time, uh, I don't know, there was the jobs, in, especially in Ottawa, weren't there, for in, especially in newspaper industry. So I started applying everywhere and, uh, you know, around the country. <laughs> Funny story was that I got, I, uh, I got a, a job offer from Grand Prairie. Uh, and uh, so the guy phones me up and says, hey, uh, well, we're on to offer you this job. Da -da 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 -da. And at that time, I was covering sports. Uh, so I had no clue about Grand Prairie. And uh, so I asked him, like, what do you, you know, what do you guys cover, like, in summertime and whatever? And, and he mentioned, you know, the typical, right? In winter, it's hockey, and, and then in summer, all the other sports. And then he said, chuck wagon racing. And here's a kid from Ottawa, right? <laughs> and I go, chuck wagon racing? What the hell's that? <laughs> and uh, he, he explained it to me. And so I said, you know what? It's a big move. I got to check, you know, check things out and that I'll let you know tomorrow. So first thing I did is I went, look, got a map of Alberta, saw where Grand Prairie was. And I said, no, 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 I'm not going there. The irony of all this is that... You know, you fast forward a couple of years, and I'm at the Calgary Herald, I'm in the sports department, and what am I covering every year is chuck wagon racing. Chuck wagon. Yeah, <laughs> that would be, uh, 
actually going on trips, like going to Pinoca and going to High River to cover the checks there as well as the stampede. But before I got to Calgary, I uh, had a stint a year and a half in Nelson, BC. I was sports editor there and then uh, moved to Calgary in October of 1980. So 40 years this fall, like unbelievable. Well, congratulations, yes. And uh, thank you. You <laughs> definitely made uh, Calgary your home. And we are we are glad you're here. Thank you. And uh, you're you're a happily married man with a couple of kids. So you Great. did you meet your wife here, or is that uh, uh, long story? <laughs> oh, we wow. had, we had a mutual friend. Uh, our mutual friend lived in Houston, and <laughs> uh, uh, my wife Marlene lived in Saskatoon, and I was in Calgary. And the mutual friend said. I think the two of you should get together and meet and um, and basically gave each of us each other's phone numbers um, and uh, and my wife actually made the first move she <laughs> she called me first and our first conversation ended up the whole night like literally into the next morning and wow. uh, and it was history all history from there wow. <laughs> so you're you're in Calgary, you've, uh, as a reporter, I'm sure you covered lots of things. You were obviously here for the 1988 Olympics. Yep. And and when did the faith component kind of enter into your oh. your walk here? Well, you know, I grew up, as I said, in Ottawa. I went to a, initially an all boys a Catholic high school. Uh, but uh, actually in the second year in grade 10, um, they amalgamated uh, the all-girls school with the all-boys. And uh, so uh, that was St. Pius X. And uh, I had a good rooting uh, of faith there because I, I just loved it. It was a bunch of priests there. One of them uh, happened to be Father uh, uh, Bedard. And I don't know if you remember oh, Father Bedard. Yeah. Uh, what the, uh, what's, what's it called? The Companions of the cross. Yeah, the Companions That's of the Cross. I actually, yeah. Yeah. it's on the to-do list uh, in the yeah. future here. Fabulous book, a fabulous, and he was such a fabulous man. And uh, and I think uh, I had a a rooting there, and uh, and every day there would be a daily mass. Uh, so it was either your spare or taking the mass. For some reason, at that time as a teen, I I kind of enjoyed really enjoyed going to the mass. I was. It was the uh, sitting in on this um, in a kind of a big assembly hall type area, right? Sitting on the floor, and you know, you're, you're sitting singing the old kind of folk songs, the kumbaya type stuff. <laughs> so, so I kind of really enjoyed that. But you know, and I think everybody does this. It's funny. I was reflecting on this the other day. Is about how that prodigal son story to me is is I my favorite story in the whole Bible, right? And I, and I read it a lot because every time I read it, I got some different insight into things, et cetera. But I think that's, everybody has that prodigal son journey at some point in their lives, right? And, uh, you know, and I think, especially when you get to that certain age of maybe late or early to mid teens to, to early twenties, you know, and, and a lot of people start looking at different things. And that was me, right? Got out of university yep. and basically went away from everything. Literally went away from everything for probably, oh gosh, probably a, a decade. And, uh, and it's funny because I was having a tough time in my life in around 89 to, to the early 90s period. And, uh, and, and doing... <laughs> I shouldn't say stupid stuff, but but you know, looking you know, looking at different things like new yeah. age, new age stuff, and those kind of spirituality things. And it was so, fairly prevalent. Uh, oh, yeah, and, yeah, and and encouraged, and yeah, there was yeah. lots of lots of options and the self help stuff, all that stuff, and and so um, it was funny because then one day I used to walk from my home. I used to live in Malin Heights, so. It, People don't know where that is, just off of the downtown. So on nice days, I would walk, especially on Sundays, I would walk downtown. There was a couple of great bagel places. I'd have a coffee with a nice bagel and read the paper type thing. 
But this one Sunday, I'm walking down 14th Street, and I walk right by Sacred Heart Church. Sacred and Heart something, I don't know what it was. I got goosebumps uh, actually just saying this. I, I walked in the door, right? And it was absolutely packed. I had the last seat in the house at the very back and uh, realized it was Palm Sunday. I, I, I had no clue it was Palm Sunday, right? So something happened to me during, that, the, during the mass that the next, well, not the next, yeah, it would have been the next day. It was on the Monday. I phoned Sacred Heart Church and uh, I came in and talked to, at that time, it was Father Cooney who became Bishop Cooney. Cooney. And we had a long chat and, uh, uh, you know, it was like the prodigal son coming back and being welcomed and, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and the rest is history. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, and I got really involved in, in Sacred Heart, uh, you know, as Part of their parish council, I did a lot of volunteering, a lot of different things, and uh, and that's where you know the the, uh, the faith got re rerooted again, so to speak. Yeah. Well, and that's where what's interesting is you were blessed in many ways because to to have Father Cooney as the guy, unbelievable. Yeah. He he's such a warm soul such a, a gifted homilist he just uh and he, he was always on fire I mean, oh yeah for his homilies holy smoke that like, he was on fire and he would basically be up on his tiptoes like 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 uh, you know and uh, and you can just see him leaning forward with his hands on the podium right and uh, that was yeah he was a great man a very wise extremely wise and man. it was around that same time that i I didn't sway too far away from the church, but at the time I would call my wife and I habitual Catholics or, uh -huh. you know, like if it was a nice sunny day yeah. on a Sunday, well, a, a trip to Banff might be more in line than going to mass. So yeah, here, yeah, yeah. And, and then I, I went to a couple of those masses by Bishop Cooney, he, Father Cooney at the time, and he was that, fantastic. Yeah. He just, oh, yeah. and, and, uh, and I went. You know what for me, it's uh, I, I still lean towards the uh, the traditional, right? So, so uh, just the the um, the ambiance and the atmosphere in that church, right, has just brought me back uh, in time. Uh, you know, because even as a little kid, you know, I grew up in in Little Italy in Ottawa, and the church just around the little literally around the corner from our house was St. Anthony. So it's like the, the you know, the uh, cathedral in, in, in Ottawa in some ways for that part. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, you know, you walk in there and it's just an old style, you know, Catholic church, Italian Catholic church. And, and that's what I loved about uh, St. Uh, sorry, St. Uh, Sacred Heart. Um, and I still, I still do, right? I, the, <laughs> I must admit, I have a, a, a soft spot uh, uh, for for those old traditional churches, right? Well, and I no was to the new ones, but <laughs> well, and I was gonna say, I was blessed enough to stop by our new shrine. We're recording this during the COVID thing, yeah. And unfortunately, the churches they had to open the new church well nobody could go to church the yeah. live stream but what a beautiful setting much like a traditional old catholic church that you'd see in montreal or ottawa oh, yeah or, so and you know i remember it's kind of funny because i remember um my wife and i went to italy in 96 on our honeymoon right okay and, oh man you yeah <laughs> you go event for no one who no one uh, has gone to Italy. You, 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 it's incredible. Well, first of all, there's a church on almost every block, right? And uh, yeah. in Rome and, and, and the big places, but it's unbelievable architecture and, and art, you know, all that stuff. It's just, it's stunning. It, it, it oh, really, it's really stunning. And it makes you, you know, and even even the, the the positioning of the church, right? You go to small towns, right? And the church is in the heart. It literally is in the heart 
of the community, right? It's almost, it's like the plaza area, right? In the center of the town and, and everything else kind of, kind of spins off of that. So, and then you have this, like the city hall decided, you know, that type of thing and all the other stores and, well, and, and yeah. And when, when I was in Rome and we were uh, taken around by Monsignor Owen Keene and, and like, all the piazzas seem to have a church off off of them and oh, it was yeah. like everywhere you went oh here's the heart of saint charles barmero and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, here's the greats that saint <laughs> lawrence was uh oh man and the thing is is there's so many things that you don't know right yeah. about these uh, there's so many of these little treasures all over the place uh you know i don't know uh i don't know have you ever been uh, to um um uh the basilica uh what's uh, in rome um saint john lateran yes uh, did, 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 did you go across the street? walk around but yes did you go across the street to the stairs yes yes okay see la scala santa a lot of people have no clue that even exists and and we didn't until a friend of ours uh who uh, when we were going uh told us well you got to go see this well, what is this right and uh and she had seen it because she uh, she and her son years before had um gone with their parish priest to rome um I actually got to meet uh i think they got to meet the uh, uh, uh pope john paul uh, oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, but but she she heard about this through like I guess the priest and uh, and it was like we get there and whoa, yo, know, do you want to explain to people what we're talking about? <laughs> well, I, I just uh, I I was having a a, a, a brain fart and uh, it's yeah. Saint Helena was the mother yes. of Constantine yeah. that went back to Jerusalem and brought many of the articles back and these are the 33 stairs that jesus went to meet pontius pilate on so that's what we're and, talking about yeah and everybody kind of lines up and and goes up up the stairs on their knees and it's uh and these are like marbles so it's not an easy one <laughs> I, I didn't i didn't do it on my knees and uh, <laughs> i walked up the other set of stairs and around and looked around because we had been watching for yeah. a long time see, and yeah it, but see that's what i'm say saying like there's so much of that out there that what a lot of people really uh, don't know right and uh, it's too bad right? um, yeah, and one, one of the things that we loved was the sign at the bottom of the stairs going up these stairs on your knees won't save your soul going to confession will so <laughs> Yes, that's so true. Uh, is that you being in, or is that? No, you? I'm just looking. Actually, uh, no, I've got my do not disturb on till oh, five o'clock. So uh, that's not mine. Somebody, <laughs> somebody asking to come in. Uh, we just say so, no. This is a private. Yeah. This is a private dram. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So tell yeah. tell me, did you get a chance to taste yours, or is it? Uh, how is it? Yeah. No. No. I tasted it. Uh, in, in fact, uh, that one went by. Uh, didn't last long. It was uh, I think it was the Father's Day gift. So, so for those that don't know, uh, he's calling it a single grain because it in Canada and and Scotland, before you can be called a whiskey, it has to be three years of age, and they haven't quite aged it long enough to call it a whiskey. They're wow. in the process of it. There you and, go. And and. Uh, I went and tasted some down there, and it tasted nice. <laughs> yeah, they have a couple of really, really nice ones, and uh, they have one that uh, the Spalumbos. Uh, uh, I don't yeah, know, Spalumbo sponsor, Amaro. something like that. Amaro, yeah, it's really good. They're really good. Yes, I'm gonna have to, Tony, if you're hearing this. <laughs> I and God Squad have bought a lot of Spalumbos, and I haven't tasted that one. Well, I tasted it down there, but a bottle would be nice. <laughs> we'll have to do an interview with uh tony on yeah it's good tony yeah you'll have to make sure it's uh uh yeah <laughs> so mario and i go to uh men's breakfast every wednesday prior to covid uh physically and 
Mary, you've eaten fairly well at these things. Oh, uh, man, yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of which, are we, uh, you know, we're not about a month or so away. Like, what, any plans for that? Or? Well, I'm hoping to relaunch. Uh, we're still waiting for the churches to give us permission to come in and, and okay. serve food and, and gather. I, we it's, might be able to gather as without the food. So we'll, yeah. we'll wait and see on that. We, we've done a number of studies. We've done uh, That Man Is You. And I really enjoyed the new format with the different presenters this year. Yeah, yeah, that was good. And I, I've always in, enjoyed that. I just, you know, it's hard, you know, in this day and age to, to, uh, to uh, get together with kind of quote unquote like-minded people and, you know, and, and share, share your thoughts about it, especially when it comes to faith, right? And, uh, uh, and I, I always found that, you know, that, that group is a, is a great group. And discussions are fantastic, right? And I think in, in many ways, some people just lay out their souls and, uh, and their hearts on the table, right? And uh, sometimes, depending on, on the topics, and uh, uh, especially if they touch close to home type thing, right? And, and there's always, you know, there's, I don't think there's ever really been a bad argument in there. Like it's been, you know, the discussion or, it's, you know, and, and sometimes some not heated discussion, but debate for better lack of a better word. And I think that's what you need, right? And uh, I'd love, I'd love to see, man, we've talked about this before. I'd love to see uh, kind of a, a similar thing happen in a bar. Like, so, so uh, and led by Father, Father Jonathan that, he, you know, let's get a, a bunch of guys together, 10 guys, we'll get a couple of tables down at the Silver Point and have a couple of drafts and, uh, and uh, talk about the faith. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the other people in that bar? But uh, they going through their mind like, "What well, is this?" <laughs> yeah, I I, re I remember the when we started God Squad. Well, even before we we started as praying policemen on our knees every on the first mm. Friday of the month at Sacred Heart and mm. doing the rosary. And I went up to help Steve Wood sell the books at his first St. Joseph's Covenant Keepers. And I brought yeah. the guys up. So we're having dinner with Steve Wood and Jeff Cavins in a pub after, to, you know, praying and everything with four big policemen. And it was, oh, wow. yeah, it was, yeah. It was fun. So that's kind of where the whole idea a Dram with Friends came, came from was yeah. let's talk about faith, food, family, and fun, or faith, family, food, and fun. And, uh, and just, I think that would be an awesome setting. And so we might have to take this on the road or, or set up meetings. And I look yeah. forward to, to doing something like that. And we're, I've been asked to be on the board of the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance. And that's one of their things is to try and get men's ministries going in every diocese in Canada. Well, North America. Oh, is really? Well. And so it, it's a U.S. based, yeah, uh, with Father Larry Richards on the board and and Deacon Harold. So this is these are things that attract men and ideas. Yeah, a comfortable, safe space for them to share. Well, I know. Well, let's let's put it this way too, right? It's it's it kind of in some ways. You know, I just look at our group, right? <laughs> yeah. And you kind of break the stereotypes of, okay, who is, what kind of men are into faith and religion, right? And, uh, and, uh, and, and, in, and in, in many ways, you go around the table and, you know, you break the stereotypes and, uh, uh, you know, that, you know, at, at the heart of it all, we're still like, just regular guys that like to have a drink and like, like to, uh, you know, uh, enjoy sports or and, and enjoy other stuff that uh you know that guys do and music you know stuff like that and uh and just the camaraderie of uh, not what drinks with other guys so yeah i and i uh it, it's too bad right because uh you know you go over through time and and people you know get the certain impression of uh what someone with faith is like and uh you know through my experience i've, I've met so many different people and uh, sometimes people that you never even think of 
what you know have 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 a deep faith, right? Yeah, and that's where we're hoping, especially in this time of turmoil, uh, that under the tutelage of Saint Joseph, the men start feeling comfortable coming together, sharing. And yeah. creating those opportunities for men to to share their faith mm-hmm. and encourage one another to go out in the world. Because what we need now is men of faith in the world. And I don't think we'd be having as many problems as we do currently. So Yeah, we do have a few. <laughs> uh, but, room yeah, for improvement. Uh, but as yeah. you started the talk about the prodigal son... Yeah. That is the greatest story for men, no matter where you're at. Like he was the lowest of low. He he squandered everything. Yeah. And, you know, as I said before, like I have a a good friend, uh, uh, I'll mention his name, my good friend, Tony Reno. And uh, and Tony and I have had this discussion many times over the years about the different uh, uh, different lessons and insights you, you learn by reading the prodigal son and 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 you know that's what that's why it I always thought that that the homilies and the priests uh, bring something to the table that that you can, can you not cannot get really without them right and and it's it's their insight sometimes on on when they there's a passage from the Bible and and they start talking about it and then you go whoa i never thought of that angle on, on this right but they've got a history of background and education on on everything on you know what the you know on the bible on catholic teaching on on history and culture of, of different times and eras right uh when the story was taking place so they give you like a real insight in things but but again, but beyond that, it's also in your own mind, right? Is, is when you're reading something like that, um, and you know, in terms of a pause for reflection, and uh, and I know for me, I don't know how many different things shine when I read that story, right? And uh, well, and pop to mind. Yeah, the last the last few times I've heard it talked about the other brother. You yeah. know, focusing on that aspect where all of us cannot get caught in, well, I'm the good Catholic and what's this guy mm-hmm. doing here? Yeah. Uh, you've got to love your brothers no matter where they are on your walk because you know we all fall short. And, and no matter what you're doing in the church, there's – always room for you to help a brother well sure well think about that two story right and 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 then you could only speculate and uh, because you don't know but uh you know did the brother the elder brother ever try to help the younger brother the prodigal son uh from going down that road uh you know did they ever go down and and snatch him out of uh, his, his uh, you know, his uh, sinful ways or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So, or the younger brother or the older brother just say, yeah, so long, Johnny. Uh, have a good life. <laughs> well, my, uh, actually, my Bible's just right here. It was, I read a powerful one uh, the other morning, so I've been reading every morning uh, after doing the Activated Disciple with Jeff Cavins there. And mm-hmm. this, just, this just hit me uh, in, in James. Hmm. My brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from error of his way will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Wow. So okay, there you go. Natural. There you go. That's a perfect, uh, uh, that's a perfect uh, example. Of, you know, we're talking about the prodigal son. Like did the elder brother do anything? Uh, did he even know he was gone? Right. right uh, 
you know, what was the relationship there, right? And uh, so, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a fabulous story. And, uh, you know, one, one, as I said, I often just turn to and just read and contemplate because uh, it well, has so much meaning. Mario, I want to thank you for joining me uh, for right. a gram. We'll definitely do more of these off camera. And I like the idea of starting a group. So for those that hopefully I get this out before the men's night in, Mario's going to be our MC for that night because he's emceed our men's night out. And we're doing a virtual scotch tasting as a fundraiser for our local Knights of Columbus. <laughs> So Mario's a great guy, and if Thank I'm you. missing, I'm thinking he might be my guest host, and look forward to doing lots of work with Mario in the future. Mario, I've that been trying great. to figure out how to close these things. I'm working on some stuff, so <laughs> what, what, what I learned was whiskey was called the water of life. Aqua, oh, really? And... Kind of like holy water then. That's right. So you're, you're thinking, okay, <laughs> this will help us point men to Jesus, the true living water. And yeah. there you go. So uh, we'll, we'll keep go. working on our, our finish and our clothes, but thank you for your time. And I look forward to having another dram in the future with Mario Tonoguzzi. Thank you. If you have any questions or suggestions for upcoming shows, please contact adram at godsquad.ca or go to godsquad.ca to make a donation and support our endeavors.